Hi everyone. Crazy, crazy, crazy times. Uh, today is officially day, um, or not day, it's week six. It's one o'clock right now. And at this point, six weeks ago, um, I had the new ladies put in. Um, yeah, I should have made this higher. <sighs> now that I have more range of motion, I can actually do videography better. Ow. So that way I don't look as heavy. I swear half the videos I take with you guys, I look so fat. And I swear to God, I'm not that fat in real life. Um, <laughs> I'm not fat, period. My swelling has actually gone down, but I look awful in these videos. When I Like the other one when I, day when I was walking and filming from the neck up, that's why you're not supposed to do that. Anyhow, um, yeah, I remember, like I, I, I've talked many times, I did the news for... Um, six and a half years and I saw and then with, with Neighbors to Know I saw this person at a seminar thing and she came up to me and she's like wow she's like you're not fat at all and I'm like excuse me and she said uh, she said it, it really is true I guess the camera adds so much weight and I'm like thank you not thank you but I guess that was flattering that yeah I'm not heavy I know I put so much weight on whatever but um ow but uh anyway the camera literally does add pounds it's all about angles and lighting and whatever and i don't really focus on that with these vlogs so um today's topic uh is about friendships relationships um all those kinds of ships where you have people in your life um I had a great session with the therapist from the cancer center. I swear he gives me topics of things to talk about every time I meet with him. Because <laughs> um, he just says these things that are so profound that I'm like, oh. And I've heard these things before. Um, so, like, I, I've done work before where you're talking about, like, a business sense where, you know, you have yourself and then, you know, what kinds of people are you reaching out to within your uh, world um, in order to grow your business. I don't have a business, but I was thinking of like making neighbors to know into something business like. Should I turn this down some more? My arms are really sore right now because I walked 1.6 miles today, which was too much. Um, so I'm a bit sore uh, and taking it easy since I did that. Um, I felt great until uh, I started turning around and walking back, but I'm going to try to get more focused on what I'm talking about. So the circle. So if you're talking about business, you know, you have yourself as the person who's starting whatever company it is that you're thinking of and then you know, working your way out from like, uh, you know, close people that you know that you might want to tie, tie in or whatever, business partners, bosses, CEOs, um, you know, your community around you, the town, the state, the country, whatever level you're at, you know, and then ultimately affecting the world as a whole. Um, so the same can be said for relationships. Um, and I do mean all kinds of relationships, um, friendships, uh, family relationships, romantic relationships, all of that. Um, and, and throughout this whole journey with me, um, with breast cancer, and today's October 1st, so apparently it's, it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, so be aware that it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month and, and your circles of people, um, you know, men, make sure that you're still checking because yes, you can, men can get breast cancer. It's very rare, but it is possible. And for when, you know, just make sure you get your butt out there and, um, get yourself tested and checked. Um, if you feel like something's up, take care of it. Don't put it off. Um, yeah. So I, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that just cause it's October 1st. But the relationship thing, and I, I said throughout this process, you know, I'm on day 80, whatever, of processing this entire friggin' journey. Um, thankfully, with text by my side, I'm going to come back to text in a little while because text has come in so handy. And I've done a ridiculous amount of research on squash mellows over the past, well, I guess since yesterday, which I'm going to get to in a second. Um, if you know me, by the way, from high school, make sure that you, like, continue listening because... Uh, yeah, she's not being very quiet about it, but um, I did find out that someone very near and dear to me um, was diagnosed with invasive ductal carcinoma, and I found out yesterday. And I don't want to get emotional because I want to 
focus first, put this inside, focus first on, on, on the overview. So I'm going to have text here as emotional support. <laughs> uh, but squash mills are awesome, man. Anyway. Okay, so what I was talking about with relationships with me with the breast cancer journey is um, how when you get diagnosed, uh, several things happen with relationships and just like people around you. You have the people that you're super tight with, whether they're friends or family, that you expect to step up and you expect to do this and you expect to do that. And I've learned over the years not to have expectations about things or to lower my not really lower my expectations, but you know, you can't assume someone's going to do something and then just get disappointed all the time when they don't. It's it's a shift from glass half empty to glass half full kind of thinking. And um, I've seen that a lot with this breast cancer journey, and and I I was fixating so much on on people that I'm like, why are they not doing this and why are they not doing this and th their role is this they should be doing this and they should be doing that and all this should have coulda, woulda, all of that. And if you stay in that zone, you'll just like, you know, wind down and not be in a good place. So, um, and then on the other end of the spectrum, you have people that are stepping up. Um, for me, for example, I have uh, people that have been in my world that have stepped up. Some, like one person I met literally once at a party and she has gone above and beyond to help me out um and I think well like why is she helping me out so much like you know I'm not tight with her like I don't understand whatever so you have those two ends of the spectrum where you have people that um you expect to step up and be your everything and then some are and some aren't and then you have the people on the other end who you might even know, not know them at all. They could be someone who's like, oh, I have a friend of a friend that went through breast cancer. I'm going to have them reach out to you. Okay. Um, don't even know who they are. But then they just start texting you to check in to see how you're doing. And all of a sudden, like, that person that was here isn't so much here anymore, but it's starting to, like, move, you know, and shift over. Um, so, uh yeah, so I've had several people that I was not like super, super tight with that I haven't known for like 20 years, whatever. And they have stepped up with like, uh, you know, just randomly checking in. Do you need anything? You know, not on a scripted day, just like at any time. And, you know, oh, by the way, I'm going to the grocery store. Can I pick you up something? Or I'm going to CVS. Can I pick you up something? Um, you know, I have the morning off. Do you want to go for a walk or something like that? And... It, for me, it's like it's kind of out of the assigned character that I've given that person, which is created by me, and where I've put them in the realm of my life and people that I know. Weirdly, one of them just texts me right now. Oh my gosh, this is a perfect example. <laughs> perfect example. Just a random email that I just got that came up. Timing is everything, man. That she said, I'm making spaghetti squash soup or whatever. And I'm like, you know what? Right now, my fridge is getting pretty bare. I would love spaghetti squash soup. <laughs> and by the time I post, I'll respond to her when I'm done. By the time I post this, like, it'll be too late for that. But I'm like, I've known her since I've lived here for like 10 years. Um, and she's been in my circle and she's helped me out with certain things but she's helping me out above and beyond with food. And I right now have so many food restrictions. It's ridiculous. While well, they're trying to sort out like what caused my kidney stone and all this other stuff. And then you mix it together with where I am now. And, and you know, even being on the tamoxifen and, and being aware of am I going to have nausea? Like all this different stuff. And every food that she brings me, everything has been perfect. Like exactly the foods that I need. She knows what things I can't eat because of the kidney stone. Um, but she's like totally, totally, totally been there. But it's not in my like immediate, you know, what I think is my little circle here. So what I want you to envision for a second here is circles, okay? So you have the circle, that's you. Like your immediate circle is you, your body. Like you are your number one. You know, you can't say, oh, my spouse is my number one. No, you are your number one, period. You're your number one. 
you're your first circle. It's all about you, your body, your mind, your soul, all of that. That's just you. Your next circle out would be like the people in your immediate space that you see like every day. For me, that would be my two sons. So they're in that second circle. Um, it's not about distance. It's about like where my energy goes to. They're in my second circle. Then you have your third circle, which are people that are close to you, but that you don't necessarily see every day. Um, you know, friends, family, parents could be in that category or in one closer if you're living with them or whatever. And as you move out in circles, like you've got one circle here, another circle around it, and another circle around that, another circle around that, and blah, 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 whatever. And it keeps going out. And your outermost circle are people that you, um, you know, are in your world that you know who they are and you could pass them by and, and, and the grocery store and just say hi. And you don't really know much about them at all. But like, it's fine. You know, you know who they are and you say hi and that's the end of that. But, um... What's interesting that I'm learning through this process and through as I'm getting older um, is how fluid those circles are. Not my circle. Like I have learned that flu that circle had been fluid for a while. And like, especially after this, I'm like, I am my number one, period. If I'm not like in a good place with my body and my head and me, I am of no use to anybody to my other extra circles at all. Um, and my kids will always be my, you know, my number twos, um, tied, <laughs> tied for second place. They'll, they'll always be my number twos in that circle. And someday, you know, a significant other would be in that circle, um, too. But what's interesting is the fluidity between those other outer circles. And no matter how old you are, even if like, you know, you're a 20 year old who's watching, you get that, you know, as you go through grade school and high school and college and one job to another job or whatever it is, you know, people come into your life and they play the roles that they play. And then you could be friends with someone for like for me for 50, well, not 50, that'd be weird, but like 45 years. And then you could be friends with someone that you just met like two weeks ago and they could fall in and out of different, you know, of different circles of where they are. And sometimes because it's because of fallouts. Um, sometimes it's just because, you know, you don't see them. Um, they don't live by you or, you know, you don't have things really in common anymore. You know, people evolve. As you get older, I think I've evolved substantially over the past couple of years. I mean, really substantially over the past couple of years. Um, but that fluidity is something that when you're a black and white person, and I'm a math person, so I, I, I don't think in circles. I think in like line bar graphs. So it's hard for me to grasp my head around, yet it makes sense to me. And it almost validates the fact that people can move from this circle to that circle or that circle to this circle and it's all okay. And if you find, especially with this journey, that there's people that were in this circle and you're like, why aren't they doing blah, 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 blah. And you get really upset about it, which I have been for many days and I'm up to day 80, whatever it is, but for many days, but it's not necessarily a matter of letting go. It's a matter of, okay, maybe those people really right now are in this circle. And while that makes me sad that they're out here because I want them to be here, but you know, people are who they are and do what they do for whatever reason. Um, by them shifting out to here, you still have a circle and it's like, well, now you have some more space in this circle. So what are you gonna do with that space? Are you gonna let that space be empty? And then be like, well, why isn't anyone there for me? Not that I've ever been there. <laughs> Have. I don't stay there, though. That's the difference of my progression and, uh, I don't know, evolution over the past couple of years. But that space is there. And that space is now more open. And it's like you have, you know, like your heart. You have space there to add things into it. And just recently, since I had that appointment, I'm thinking, okay, who do I put in this outside circle that really have been, and it's not about tasks. It's about, you know, they're doing things that fill my heart, that fill my soul, 
but they're still here. And I'm like, you know what? They're doing all these things. And I'm like, I need to focus a bit more on that. Like, why am I focusing so much on the negative of this happening and not noticing that this all, like this outer section is almost like blowing up and I'm not seeing that to, you know, move people in closer. And it's not a matter of fear of relationships. I'm so not about that at all. Um, I'm a very open, loving person. So I look at those people and it's a handful of people at the top of my head that I can think of that one of which <laughs> was the person that just emailed me that I'm like, why don't I bring them closer? And it's not like a controlly thing at all. Um, it's like I'm some puppet master or whatever. But the point is like taking the time to notice that, yeah, they're doing all these things. They're wanting to spend time with me. And it's not on my, uh, sorry, that's my son. I always pause. Um, it's not on my, uh, uh, I lost my train of thought because my son just texted me. See, because he's in that circle and I'm like, now my, my head is there. Um, he'll be fine. He'll figure it out. Uh, crap. I just, I just lost my moment. So, okay, let me go back to the people I'm thinking. I don't use names on this, but like one person I'm thinking of um, who's been like getting groceries for me and driving me to get my hair cut and um, I play tennis with her and all these different things and I'm realizing like she's just easy to be around and I think I need to take the time to stop to really get to know her more. Um, yeah. And, and not be like, okay, you know, someone's an acquaintance or whatever. Because that, that opening right now is like, you know, is there for me to explore friendships with people that, um, that may not have been like in your immediate radar. So I'm at the, you know, week six mark, whatever. And it's not even about the surgery. It's just, um, it's, it's kind of like the week six is like you're supposed to be healed between six and eight weeks. It takes six to eight weeks to heal from a, a dual mastectomy, you know, on average. We all know I'm a couple weeks behind on that. Um, I am getting way better. My left arm, like, look, well, oh, that movement's still tough, but I can go up to, oh, I can go up to here. That it, then it starts hurting the right side. On the right side, my right hand still is like, is still like down here. I'm not even gonna try that. Um, but I can reach and get a bowl on the second shelf with my left hand in my cabinets, which is exciting. So yeah, it's that fluidity. It's like you know, you you have this opening now. Don't focus so much on the sad of what's moving this way. It's like focus on what's coming in that you're not seeing is coming in, and take that because that's that's your good energy that's what's fueling you and you're not why well, I, I wasn't seeing it um and she's not the only one i mean somebody else that i i met once at a party ironically for someone who was just finishing up treatment for breast cancer and celebrating and that's where i met her and we had a whole bunch of things in common and we kept saying you know oh, let's get coffee let's get coffee let's get coffee that was like years that was going on and then this obviously slowed me down a ton and she offered all this different help and, and, you know, something random, like she picked out balloons for my son when he passed his road test. And I'm like, I want to do something for him and I'm stuck here. I can't do anything. And I don't even know what to do. And she picked out balloons for him. And, and I'm like, you know, I've, I've gone walking with her and I'm like, I do have a ton in common with her. And I'm like, let's, you know, let, let's rewind because I'm at a place with my healing right now where it's not so much, I mean, yes, I absolutely need help with stuff still. I don't know when I'll be able to go grocery shopping again. I really don't. I can't carry stuff. It's just too freaking heavy. And I'm sure PT will help with that, but I can't imagine doing a grocery uh, thing. And even for cooking, it's like, you know, if you make something, everything is heavy. If I'm limited to only carrying five pounds or lifting five pounds, that's really limiting when you're cooking. You know, pot alone when it's empty weighs whatever it weighs. So I don't mean tasks. I mean like the support that I need right now the most is more friendship and emotional. 
um, you know, it's like, let's, I can go for a walk on my own. Like, I'm fine with that. I, I, I intentionally spent time in my little circle with just Jen to date Jen for a while, you know, to make sure I'm good with Jen. <laughs> And, and I totally am like, I'm, I'm self-confident. I'm, you know, I'm in a good place with myself. I'm not even talking about the surgery. Like it has nothing to do with that at all. Like I'm, I'm in a good place with, with me. Um, but I, I, um, I, I hate when these notifications pop up because I get so distracted so quickly. Ugh. I got these really good things and then I should you know what I should do is shut my notifications off when I vlog that way I'm not looking at it anyway sorry so I don't even know what the heck I was saying um but next to me and again I don't use people's names because I don't like to do that but next to me is my high school yearbook um wow that's heavy <laughs> I'm not gonna pick that up and I bring that up um because yesterday I found out that my um, my closest friend when I was a kid, um, known her since I think kindergarten, and her family was like a second family to me growing up. And she um, and we grew apart over the years. Um, I mean, most of my high school friends are that I keep in touch with are, are pretty much in New York still. Um, but she. Uh, she texted me yesterday and told me she was diagnosed with invasive, duct invasive ductal carcinoma. And I'm like, what? And I haven't talked to her on the phone in I don't know how many years. I haven't seen her in person. Well, one-on-one, -on -one, I haven't seen her in person in, in about 15 years. Because our kids were both very, very, very little last time I saw her. Like, just us in person. And then I did organize a, a 24th high school reunion, I think. Um, where she was there, but it was a bunch of people, so I didn't really get any, you know, quality time just to catch up with her or anything. Um, and then it's not like we had a fallout. It's just, we, I don't know, we just kind of did our things and, and you know, that was that. But I've known her since kindergarten, so that's like friggin' 45 years. It's a long, long, long time. And I didn't even, like, hesitate. I saw her text... And I didn't even allow myself to react. I just clicked on the audio button on my phone and called her. And I don't remember the last time we even had a phone conversation, but I she picked up and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> and it, it was like, I just talked to her yesterday. And that's what makes friendships like that so, so, so special and so rare that like, you could just pick up the phone after all this time and um, and just pick up. Like, you know, pick up talking, like like you just saw her yesterday in, in second period or whatever. I say that because I kept notes. Like, back in the day before we had phones, uh, we used paper and would write notes to each other. And then in the 80s, at least, we'd take them and then we would fold them. And then you'd fold them again and again and again. And you'd, like, tuck them underneath here like this. Um, and it says Jen on there because that was for me. And apparently on February 12th, there was a key club meeting at 530, <laughs> which is funny. And her handwriting is always like super impeccable. Um, and the paper smells like, it smells like school. And it smells like a like an old photo album. It's like, why am I smelling paper? It's just like nostalgic. Um, but I kept, uh, I, I kept a bunch of notes. Oh, I have a hysterical one here from my other good friend. Um, also, I've known her since like 7th or 8th grade. I left my Adelphi inv invitation in your car. I need it. <laughs> oh, and her locker combinations on here. Oh my gosh, that's hysterical. So funny. But yeah, this one was just folded. And I don't even know if she knows that I have this. The edges of the paper are actually getting brown. That's what's funny. So here's the note that she wrote me, front and back. There's one, two, with a map on it. Um, <laughs> it's long. It's four pages, front and back. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. I should show her this. She'd get a kick out of it. But anyway, um, yeah. So my friend um, was diagnosed with cancer. And I'm not going to explain her story, but it is more invasive than mine. Um, and I don't know how to help 
when it comes to other treatments because I didn't need chemo or radiation. Um, but it just, um, you are reading glasses. I'm not going to read this like word for word, but this is a note that she wrote me, I assume in senior year, because it's in my yearbook. Um, just a couple of things I'm going to read. She said, it's a, it's a really hard job to be a friend, but some people are worth the work. Um, even though there are tense times very rarely, it makes the good times so much better. Um, I don't, I don't want to read too much of this, but you know, we, we did go through a phase in, in middle school, early high school, where we weren't friends anymore. It's like, you can be friends with her, or you can be friends with her. Uh, FYI, I'm friends with both of them right now, and I'm like almost 50. Um, she said, uh, you know, like you go through your ups and downs, whatever, and then you come together again, only to find your friendship, our friendship was stronger than ever. And I realized it's something I'll never give up. Um, you're the best friend in the world. <laughs> you're always there when I need you to talk to, to laugh with, or to cry with. You really are my best friend. Um, and this is back when we were 17. And it's like all these years later. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? Like we're both dealing with breast cancer at the same time. And for those of you that were in marching band with us, I made this comment like... First chair and second chair in, in marching or in concert band right now. We're out of commission because we're both going through breast cancer treatments. So I'm sure you can figure out who I'm talking about if you went to high school with me. Oh, and weirdly, uh, I have my flute right here. <laughs> I tried so many times if she's watching this. I tried so many times to like challenge her and, and band so I can get to first chair. Never happened. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Um, but yeah, it's crazy. And uh, I sent, um, she'll get this before, by the time I, I post this vlog. But, um, you know, I don't know how to help when it comes to, like I said, chemo or radiation. But I do know how to help when it comes to support. I know that I'm a really good friend to people. <laughs> I don't question that at all. And I think of little things that people have gotten me, um, like text, for example, you know, my boobs right now feel like super, super, super heavy. And I'm, I'm making a, a getting a much more conscious effort as I'm walking to like have my shoulders back and try to walk as normally as possible. I was trying or I was swinging my arms like I normally would today, but it hurts, man. Just to swing your arms normally. I always feel robotic, like I'm like this. I, I, I walk like I wa I'm waddling almost, but I'm not waddling. My, my stomach inflammation has gone down substantially. Um, like I could actually get away with wearing a bikini right now, uh, if my boobs weren't so messed up right now, they're not messed up. It's, it's just the scarring, whatever, but, but my stomach has gone down so much, which makes me really happy. I'm actually very excited to weigh in next week. Um, but this, this, the person that invented these squash or squ squish mellows, squish mellows. I did so much research on squish mellows and granted, yes, like Tex used to be a taco and there are his fillings. Um, and there was one, uh, I feel like they're like beanie babies almost because the one I wanted to get for her was called Hans the Hedgehog, which I thought was hysterical because it's Hans and like I'm German and she's Jewish and, um, like granted when we were friends in the seventies and eighties, it was way past world war two, but people still have their comments to say on like, why would someone who's German be friends with someone who's Jewish? And then fast forward, I ended up marrying someone who was Jewish so take that, you know, <laughs> weird. So anyway, um, but the Squishmallows, yeah, the Hans the Hedgehog. And, and I do actually have a friend named Hans who uh, I went to grad school with and actually introduced me to my ex-husband, which is funny. Um, and I believe he had leukemia as an adult. Um, it's just crazy what like you learn about people um i mean he had when he was an adult he had leukemia not like when i when i knew him but the squishmallows um so hans the hedgehog by the way was like an obscene amount of money and i'm like holy crap how much are squishmallows 
but I realized that when they kind of retire them and then when they're hard to find, people sell them for like an exorbitant amount of money. Um, and I was like, wow, plus you can't find them any place. Um, and I didn't want, uh, it wasn't an option to send it with a gift receipt. <laughs> like I'm not sending a gift with a price on it. That's just weird. I'm not doing that. Uh, but there's a whole ton of Squishmallows out there and it was fun to look through what they all are and what, what Tex, <laughs> what Tex has been to me. Tex really right now, even though Tex is inanimate, is, um, in my second circle with my two kids because like presently right now, um, neither one of my kids are home and <laughs> the Tex is here and Tex is helping me right now as I like lift my boobs up and, and support them physically with Tex, um, the Squishmallows are super, super helpful when it comes to lots of things. Um, I had a really good night's sleep last night. I slept seven and a half hours last night. Woohoo! My secret is that I use a different pillow. Um, it's it's pretty large. Like, it's wider than my back is. And it's, um, it's kind of firm, yet still moldable. So the firmness was nice to lean back on and not sink and have my back hurt. And then it's moldable and I could squish it around my neck to help support my neck. Um, so I was thrilled to have seven and a half hours of sleep last night. Um, but I switched the pillows underneath my arms and I do, it's just me, but when I'm laying, or it might not just be me, when I'm laying back, I still feel like my boobs go like this way, like they're falling out because they're so heavy. And the pillows help to just kind of like tuck myself in, like I'll put, when I go to sleep, and even if I'm just sitting on the couch, I'll put a pillow here and I'll just tuck it in as much as I can because it helps bring my boob forward. Uh, I should be doing this. Hold on. Ow. It helps bring my boob forward. Um, and I know like, I mean, I don't know, I'm having a good boob day, I guess, but uh, the swelling has gone down substantially here. And um, I did put a crew neck shirt on, but I pulled the neck enough that I'm able to get it off. But what I do is I, I shift it. My my boobs have become a lot softer, which they said was gonna happen, hell of frickin' Luya. So I don't feel the ripple I had was down here. I don't feel the ripple as much, which they told me was gonna happen, and this is, I'm not patient, was like, yeah, whatever, and all upset. But I don't feel it as much anymore. But my boobs are more um, fluid, <laughs> I guess, <laughs> where I can move them, and, and they don't feel like, they still feel crazy heavy. Like right now it feels like I, I have two freaking ass watermelons like glued to my chest um bending down like over is still really really hard because I, I just hold on to them because it just it's way too much weight to let go uh so anyway the squish mellow so I'll like just tuck in you can see I can move a little bit I'll tuck in here and shove him in and he's super squishy that if it's too much like my boob just pushes back out of him versus if I use some other kind of pillow it's it's harder with the angles and like Blankets don't help with that. But the Squishmallows are nice because they're so soft and because they're so moldable. Um, so I ended up getting her two of them, like one for each arm. Uh, so yeah, something like a Squishmallow. Like I, my friend Jenny that got me this is like the best freaking gift ever. I should call her. I haven't called her in a bit. Um, but rewinding back to the circles. So... My friend that has, I don't want to call her my friend that has breast cancer. My friend that has the best handwriting in the world. Um, yeah, she explained her story and it's like, I, I said to her, like I, I, I just come off the call with my, with the therapist from the cancer center. And I said, you know what, like you were out here and not the outermost circle, but like, you know, pretty far out because we haven't talked in so long, whatever. And I was okay with that. Like, it made me sad for a long time. But at this point, I'm like, you know, it is what it is. And, you know, like I said, you pick up the phone, you call. It's like nothing ever happened. Um, but I'm like, in the blink of an eye, I, I read that. I didn't even read the rest of the text. Like, I just, I just read the, she was, you know, diagnosed. And I just hit audio and I called. Um, and in, in that quick second I'm like she went from here to zoop, right back there again um yeah she's like a very 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 special place in my heart her and her whole family like they showed me normalcy when I was a kid um my parents argued a lot and stuff and later got divorced but her family like you know her mom and dad like showed me what um 
you know, what two parents getting along pretty much, well, when I was there at least, <laughs> you know, was, was like. Um, and they were, they were my second home. I mean, I, I would go there after school all the time and it's just a very special relationship. But, you know, when you have what you think is here, it's like you don't know what's going to happen and pop up and then all of a sudden, zoop, they're there. So while there were people that were in that circle for me, that they went b -b 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 on their own and I'm like, no, come back. But, you know, maybe they just need to be there for right now. And it is what it is. And then you have somebody else here that's not on your radar. I mean, of course I think about her when it's her birthday or Hanukkah or whatever. Um, but it's, that relationship is just so strong and was such a defining point for me. You know, it just, whatever. Like, it only takes one short thing and I'm like, shit hits the fan. It's like, I'm there, you know, boom. And then you don't have to like say I'm sorry or whatever. It's not about any of that. So you have to, you know, remember that people just sometimes move in those circles, regardless of what you choose. I mean, you can choose to move people yourself if you're not happy with them, whatever. You know, there's some people where I'm like, you know, their, their friendship is not really serving me. Um, you know, I don't feel comfortable around them. I don't feel like I can truly be me around them. And I will be the one to be like, you are here, but you know what? For Jen to really be Jen in her circle, you need to be out here because this is not working for me and you need to be here. Um, and that can change too. You don't know. People change, situations change. So it was just so crazy to talk about that whole circle idea and then get this text from her you know, shortly after. And it's like, boom, here to there. And like, I'm there. Like, we don't have to talk about why we didn't talk for so long. It's not about that at all. Like that bond will never, ever, ever, ever be gone, ever. There's certain relationships that I've had with people that like, you know, people even that I've screamed and yelled at. And I'm like, you know, whatever. <laughs> but when shit hits the fan, you know, if you, still underneath, like truly love that person, you're there. And then there's people on the other hand, <laughs> who <laughs> it should really hit the fan. You'd be curious and you'd be like, no, they need to stay here. <laughs> In order for Jen to be here, they need to stay there. But that for me is very, 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 very few people. Um, really one in particular, but very few people. <laughs> or maybe three, I don't know but very few people. I know the people that have fueled me in my life and um, people that have helped me see things in myself that I never could see. You know, the dynamics of how families should work. Um, and life just, you know, all of a sudden things just stop. So the black and whiteness, there was some stuff that she had written in here Ugh, damn, this is a big yearbook. It's heavy, and I can't see. Um, I love high school yearbooks. Actually, what's so funny, as I look at this, I am Facebook friends with three people on here. <laughs> the very first person that wrote on here. Oh, how funny. Um, I, I used to exchange notes with him back and forth, and I'd staple them and tape them so it was hard for him to open. And then my other friend, she still lives in the town that we grew up in. She put her phone number on here, which I won't say because she's still living in this in the same house. And I don't, I don't know if that's still her phone number that I'd be telling everyone. She also has very cool handwriting. Um, the last thing that um, this friend I'm talking about wrote to me in the yearbook was, um, I know everyone says it's over because we're talking about high school. Well, I guess for some relationships, that's true, too. But it's not. It's just beginning for us. I hope to be there for you in the future, just as I hope you'll be there for me. And who would have thought, like, what are we, 30-some years outside of high school? And you reconnect for these bizarre reasons. 
Life is weird. So my what I want to leave you with is consider those, you know, circles from my life experiences. Consider like who's in these circles that is not healthy for you to be around. That you have to like tiptoe around or whatever. You shouldn't have to tiptoe around anyone for anything, no matter how old you are. Be respectful, sure. But like if you can't be yourself around someone, uh-uh. They need to go from here out to here. You need to find people that are like here that support you and that admire you and respect you and love you. Those are the people to have here. There's no sense of obligation. It is, you know, whatever. And it doesn't also matter who says what. I mean, I've learned this, like, unfortunately the hard way. But people saying like, you know, oh, you shouldn't be friends with them or you shouldn't be dating them or here's what's wrong with him and here's what's wrong with her. You know, you have to listen to you. You know, you're, it's the same, like, it's, it's like that with parenting. People will say, you know, you shouldn't be doing this with your kid. You shouldn't be doing that with your kid. The only person who knows your kid well enough is you, period. I mean, I've been through a lot with my children. And, um, yeah, I, I can't say I've gotten a lot of great parenting advice other than things that I knew in my gut. And they're two, like, fantastic human beings. So think about your circles. Who needs to go from here to here? And think about the people that are here that you've put there. But when people come out this way and you realize the losses that you have, and those should be acknowledged, absolutely. But those holes that are there now are just, not really holes, but they're spaces. And they're spaces that people that are here that you might not be acknowledging as much maybe need to be here. And maybe you don't know who these people are yet. Maybe it's someone you haven't even met yet. I don't know. You know, if you're talking about relationships, like romantic partners, it could be someone you don't even know yet, who isn't even in a circle, because you don't even know who they are yet. But by having those spaces in that circle here, it just opens up possibilities for other people to pop in that truly are there to support you and love you and take care of you and nurture you and help you be like the ultimate you. So I'm going to take some time to <laughs> take a peek through my yearbook just for fun. <laughs> Maybe I'll play the flute for a little while. Um, helps with the physical therapy part too. All right. I will see y'all tomorrow. <laughs> Sorry. Icky boos today. Bye.